Welcome back to continuing saga of Soviet air defense system Krug. Okay, what have I done? I've jumped ahead a little tiny bit. Remember I mentioned in the first uh, video, not the first video, the last video, about painting systems. We're going to use Mr. Hobby. So um, after you saw those painting steps, I used this uh, Mr. Hobby Mr. Super Clear semi-gloss. It's semi-gloss varnish, lacquer-based. Totally 100% compatible with the paint that we applied. So there's no counter reactions. The paint doesn't melt anything. Lays down really nice and easy. And that was a satin. The semi-gloss is a satin finish. And you can see the finish on the vehicle is pretty nice. You can see that sheen that's been, that's been applied on everything. The launcher, the um, chassis of the vehicle. The only bits I haven't really done is underneath here. There's no need for that. It's going to be different sort of weathering there. In addition to that, the actual missiles themselves have been also coated in that semi-gloss. A gloss would be better for application of decals, but I use the semi-gloss and I'm sort of halfway through applying decals on the missiles. Quite a long job. There is so many of them. I'll just give you a few pointers. One thing is uh, it's a little bit easier if you leave your rocket boosters separate because you have to apply decals around the body of the missile and also on those boosters themselves. And there's so many of these, um, so many of these decals. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to do all of them, but I'm going to put on as many as I can, really. There's just lots and lots of markings. Remember when I said uh, about this uh, in the red? Uchebnaya, so it's training, these are training rounds, inert rounds for training, and that's going to fit in exactly right with what our theme is, which is a museum type vehicle. So, um, yeah, I'm going to continue with that, get all the, uh, all the rocket decals on, get them assembled, and then we'll talk about the next thing, which has to be the markings for the actual vehicle itself. So we'll get on with that pretty soon. Okay, so the decaling work is completed. Few issues, let's talk about them. Okay, long time since I've used any trumpeteer decals and um, I applied satin varnish prior to um, putting them on, but I've, I've got some silvering issues or maybe they're just a little bit more reflective. I haven't really worked out exactly what's going on. Did try using mark fit mr mark softer even to the extent that i softened up the paint but i've still got that um higher amount of real reflectivity on the decals it's no good um weathering will tone that down but i'm better off trying to get a consistent finish so what i'm going to do is we'll go in with the uh, super clear and see if we can get this issue seen to I'll just point out as well, we've, uh, if you heard the theme tune to this series, it's the um, Soviet anthem, Katusha. And of course, Katusha as well, what they called those uh, rocket launcher systems in the Second World War. I thought it'd be kind of fun to incorporate that onto these museum, museum missiles as if, um, you know, it's sort of got like a nickname. So what I've, I've used the set here that I had... Uh, from Eklon Decal set, except there was a spelling mistake. It was Katushka, it's Katusha. So that's been corrected by moving Ka from the Cyrillic alphabet. Okay, we'll try out the Mr. Super Clear. See if uh, we can sort out some of this issue, or at least improve it. Light coats. Some of the decals are quite big, and I think that might be the sort of issue. It shouldn't be normally. I just can't remember the last time I used uh, trumpeteer decals. See how that dries, see if we've sorted out this problem. Okay, that's 
helped quite a bit, but not entirely. What I'm going to need to do is actually score the decals with the hobby knife. Quite a few areas that I need to go back in with some of the uh, mark fit and try and get the decal setting solution underneath the decals themselves. Uh, pretty poor result to be honest. I don't know why they haven't adhered that well. Just one of those things, but I'll deal with that. See if we can get all this improved and then come back. Okay, so we've got the representation of the markings of the vehicle not exactly right. Like this Polish symbol here, the version they have on the armor is like elongated, um, not that sort of square, but I just want this is the best I could get out of my uh, decal collection. And the numerals aren't exactly as per the exact references, but um, they look good enough, okay? Remember, we're not doing the exact same model. We're doing our version of it. That's the beauty of modeling. So uh, they can go those are a bit crooked and a bit screwed up. I'm going to work on these as well. I'm going to fade these out as well. I'll work the, um, the leveling thinner across these as well and get these worn down. It takes a little while to do this, but... Be careful, that red comes off really easily. And it's actually... So I'll start with another one. Be careful because everything will get soft. The paint, the lacquer. There we go, a bit of wear and tear on the markings and I'm probably going to enhance that a bit later on as well. I'm going to do something else there as well. But we'll do that in the next stage. Until the red really gets blurred quickly. There we go. Okay, we're ready to start weathering properly now, at long last. In terms of weathering, it's quite simple actually. We're gonna divide the vehicle into two portions. And the dividing line is that line right there. The underneath is gonna be weathered in a different manner, different techniques as to the upper portions. And that is uh, just how vehicles look. I'll explain a bit more about that later on. But just to simplify things, the upper part of the chassis, the hull, the erector launcher, and the missiles themselves are going to take on a faded appearance first. So I'm going to use oil dot technique, basically. Oil dot technique, well, it's going to be more of a wash technique. I'm going to use two colors. I'm going to use this. Sunny flesh and the light flesh from the oil brushes, they can go straight on the model. And then in terms of blending, you can use enamel thinner or we can just use the artist oil turpentine. I think I'll go with turpentine this time. Uh, just why not? So because the oil brushes have got a, a brush built in, they can go on pretty quickly. And also the oils inside here are actually a little bit more um, liquidy. They're in a more of a solution. You can't shake them up, but um, I'll show you that basically. You can see that they're sort of liquidy, like a paint. Now, there's no need to um, wick off any paint. I mean, with oil paints, you. You can use them on a, on a cardboard palette, but I'm hoping that by what we're doing, basically, we're doing some sort of like a wash technique anyways. We're gonna fade down this paint fairly quickly.
usually you do this in very small sections at a time but I'm wanting to sort of hopefully demonstrate that this can be done relatively quickly so the real thing here is that you use a stippling motion and stippling itself is very easy it's just that it's more to do with the brushes themselves and I use these really cheap really nasty nylon brushes because it will destroy the brush and then it will sort of become frazzled and that's actually the sort of what you really need for this now what will happen is that light flesh it's nearly a white and if it's too overpowering all we're going to do is blot up the ex excess using um, probably a rag q-tips that sort of thing because we we don't want the entire thing looking in you know just too light in color we still want to see that camo underneath but the thing is we need to get this oil wash everywhere if we want to create that faded paint appearance but you can see it can go fairly quickly in terms of coverage by using the oil brushes so I'm also exploring ways to quicken up techniques and of course I'm probably explained before oil paints take a while to use so this is going to be a a two-stage process it's just the way I found it easier to work is to go lights first then darks because uh, it's going to complement all the sort of darkening that we're going to do all the grimy type effects Spread this wash as much as you can. I want to use as much as I can. And then I'll show you quickly with the excess. Take a rag. <clears throat> and I sort of take a finger and I start rolling it over the surface and taking up the excess. See, there's way too much there. This looks about right at the front, but here at the back, it's just a little bit too concentrated. So if I remove the thicker oil, now go back in again with some thinners. And then just start fading all that oil I quite like using the oil brushes just because they do spread quite easily they're quite nice and thinned out I'm going to try and bring this down the sides as well try and hit everything that I can I need to make sure I get in all areas the back deck as well all of this is going to get the same overall fading and then I'll tell you what I'll do I'll continue with this and then show you how we do the sides but you can sort of guess it's going to streak on there so rule of thumb here is stippling for the upper horizontal surfaces and then it's streaking for the vertical ones but I've got a lot of stuff to cover as well. But I'll, I'll come back and I'll show you how we do a missile because the, the Rector Launcher, this is, this is a headache to do. There's just so much. And um, when you do this fading, what is immediately obvious 
is areas that you've missed. <laughs> so you want to get <laughs> a pretty good consistent coverage. Continue to examine your model. And then the beauty of this model as well, it's got further complications in having this um, support cradle at the front. And in terms of that, I'll probably just like apply some sort of wash instead of uh, neat oils on top of there. But I'll continue on with this, come back. All I'll be doing is continue to stipple, spread the oils, come back in with a cloth, just get an overall homogeneous appearance. Yeah, I'm still working on the, um, the launcher portion. I'm thinking I'm gonna use washes on that more than anything. I'm gonna demonstrate one of these missiles now. The important thing here is that we need to remember the orientation. This isn't gonna be like an aircraft. I'm gonna have streaks going like down the things if the thing's been flying, because it obviously has not. It only flies once, then it explodes. So we need to make sure that our streaks go vertically downwards. And that means that we need to know the orientation of the missile itself in the launcher as well. But we do know that because it only fits in one way. So that is like, obviously I've got my markings coordinated that way as well. But um, I'll just show you how this works as well. We're gonna do the same, exactly the same thing. Overall applications of oil. Again, there's just so many nooks and crannies, <laughs> but uh, such as modeling. So this takes quite a long time, actually. I think uh, in total, we're gonna to be at this about, maybe about three or four hours. And this is the first stage. But um, I'll show you something else as well. The turpentine, also I'm using quite a lot of it as well, but this is turning into a wash as well. So as you go onwards, it does get easier because you've, you've got like a wash. And I'm thinking, especially on this, to start using the turpentine more and more as a wash to flood it into the details to get that faded appearance that I need. So anyways, I'll carry on, show you how this looks after we've got all this stuff uh, laid out. Okay. After the application of that filter, 24 hour period to let the oils dry out sufficiently. They're not totally dry, but they're basically dry to the touch. We can't manipulate them as much as we could previously. Let's just have a look at this at the moment. You can see that there's areas of varying concentration. Some areas have cleaned off a bit more, randomized the appearance. Remember what we're trying to achieve is as per our references, but we see that sort of faded look on the paint dusty type of appearance we basically got that in this first pass with the oils now also i'll just show you the the missiles as well uh application differed a little bit but the effect is the same we wanted to avoid anything like streaks going across the body of the, of the rocket we don't impart any suggestion that they were flying or anything like that but um same sort of fading's been achieved. Worked out really good on the natural, on these um, silver metallic portions. Faded them down nicely. So let's talk about the next step now. On the vehicle itself, although we've got that overall homogeneous faded look, we actually now, in terms of scale modeling, we wanna bring back contrast. We wanna highlight details. Everything's got an overall flat look to it. So we're gonna go in with the darks, we're gonna be pin washing specifically and uh, also we talked about a system we're going to use mr hobby again compatible system with the paints with the lacquers everything the same i'm going to apply pin wash using a mixture of mr weather and color ground brown mixed with their solvent so i'm going to make up a wash right now okay let's make up the wash this needs to be diluted it's very highly concentrated Then we add the solvent 110. I think this is just enamel thinner. In any case, it will not at all react with the varnish or with the paint finish that's already been applied. So I'm pretty sure it's enamel. 
definitely not acrylic because I think this stuff is yeah it's organic solvent it's like a white spirit type uh, medium okay make up a wash now up to you how you do your pin washes uh, you see some modelers are in are very precise now I think that's pretty good for aircraft in that they you know go back and clean up the exact line so as an example let's put down a a pin wash line we capillary it down you can see the immediate contrast now for me I'm not going to be absolutely trying to keep it within the boundaries of all the lines because what we're representing here is sort of grime that's got in between these panels not a shadow gap so it's not like aircraft panel lines so if I've got areas where it's leaking out I'll, I'll blend it out a little bit but I'm not going to uh, worry too much in terms of uh, absolute precision the other way of course in some cases I'm going to have to paint this on so here's a good example it's all totally overflowed it's not within the boundary of what would be a panel line or or a, a separation point but I'm going to use that anyways because In terms of blending, I'm just going to feather it out a little bit. Now you can see the contrast coming in already as it gets built up within these lines here to blend out pretty simple as well you can use a couple of things a brush is probably the easiest but also these cotton buds come in quite handy where there's that overlay there that's been blurred there now so there isn't basically you're trying to avoid anything that looks um, as if it's like a, a stain just looks doesn't look too good in terms of finish. Now we'll also what we'll do, we'll add in shadow around some areas, but not all of them. We want to be a bit asymmetric in terms of weathering. So here where we've got wash, let's point out here where I've got wash on one side, which is dust perhaps on the other side we can contrast with dark even you can take here another example we've got this periscope here even though it's surrounded with light dust let's make half of it dark like so so that's going to get repeated on obviously the launcher as well and in terms of the missiles let's start off one of them anyways I would like these to be pretty precise because here we want to be depicting panel gaps and also we may want to actually emphasize we probably want sharper contrast actually between the light between the relatively light color of the gray and uh, this dark panel line so I'm going to continue with that sort of show you midway through and see what that looks like
Okay, just a little summary after that pin wash stage. See what's happened. We can see a bit more emphasis on the panels. You can see they're drawn out a lot more, just on the sides as well. Other areas that you can do the pin wash are grease type effects, so any of the sort of fittings, etc., that I've used on this support cradle. A rectal launcher, a lot less on this. It's not as visible, and also there's not really that many points that need um, pin wash on but I've sort of affected uh, grease type effects on any of these sort of handles and mechanisms. And then here's one of the rockets. You can see how much more grimy that is looking now, which is what we need to do if we want to build up these effects to match references. So this needs to dry off now, and then we can go to the final, well, one of the final oil paint stages Okay, let's talk about this uh, next stage using oils. Reassemble the model, dry fit obviously. Remember these missiles, they only fit in in a specific configuration as well. Why have we done this? Because of our references that indicate there's a lot of staining underneath these missiles. Also, let's note as well that we need to bring our stains vertically downwards. So I just wanted to get a, a feel for which orientation these streaks would take. Um, We've added quite a bit of grime to the missiles themselves, but we're going to emphasize that somewhat more. I just want to make sure that I don't mess this up by getting these the wrong way around. So we're actually going to hit the underneath uh, the ventral surfaces um, with a stain. And we're going to do that um, in a manner you may or may not have seen. We use oil colors again. We use the um, oil brushes just in this example got dark brown and starship filth i'm going to go with starship filth first and this time we're going to use a palette just to get some of this stuff out so let's put some down here don't need too much and actually i think we're going to apply this time using a sponge instead of a brush so some any sponge will do it going for the ventral surfaces the idea is to get a stain underneath here so we'll start blotting this on this is the first stage this needs to be blended but i just want to get the oils applied first of all and then I think we'll also hit the ventral surfaces of these boosters as well. Let's get a little bit more on there. And actually, I'm thinking now, let's apply some neat underneath here. So there, 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 like so. And then go back with the sponge sort of start the bl start a bit of just moving it around okay that's what we're doing so let's start moving that around a bit also i'm going to get some underneath there So what we're representing here is it's just actually as per the references we saw that were stains underneath where whatever had deposited itself organic matter um probably the effects of just wear and tear from being sat outside for that long that's uh Looking pretty good. We don't want it opaque, we need it a bit translucent. Okay, so that started that off. Let's use some mineral spirits now, or you can use enamel thinner. And start blending a little bit. And we'll use the same 
method as we did elsewhere, which is stipple. So we need to get this oils moved around a bit. So let's get that going a bit like so. This needs to dry off a little bit now. Let's do the other one. Okay, let's start trying to get some streaks going. Apply neat oil. Just a drop or two. And then what we'll do, we'll use a feathered, I thought a fan brush. Start pulling these down. I'm going to take a bit of work, a couple of reapplications. We'll get this going. And I'll probably come back in with some uh, other oil paint and get that done as well. Let's let this dry off a bit. I'll show you how to keep working these streaks in. Okay, I'll just give you a quick pricey on this one. This one's more or less done. Pretty grimed up, dirty. Just make sure that you've got all the stuff running in the same direction. So none of it, obviously if it's on that fin, which is the upper part, you don't want streaks going that way. Ventral side's been even more mocked up. Create all those spills and stains. And just compare it to this one that I've still got to do see it's a lot less so I'll work on this one and then we'll have a little comeback and uh, I'm thinking about actually adding some oil onto the erector launcher part I think I'll do a bit of that as well and we'll come back and see how everything looks okay just something to bear in mind uh, try and understand your subject uh, avoid gross errors. In this case, the engine's mounted at the front of the hull. So we expect, uh, you know, oil, that sort of thing. Exhaust here as well. Very small exhaust. On my references, there's not a lot of sot. It isn't like one of those um, really oily T72 type engines. And also, at the back as well, uh, we've got an intake louver here and we've got an exhaust here. But this is a gas turbine, probably driven from kerosene very clean there's no exhaust stains no soot so let's not just pretend let's just keep it as it is clean and then we can explain that because uh we're going to try and follow our references okay let's wrap up this video just do a quick appraisal everything was in oils basically uh we've achieved the sort of weathering the hardcore sort of weathering uh for what our subject reference was so remember, it was a museum example. The vehicle had obviously been outside. The missiles are not active. They've been exposed to the elements and they're starting to sort of deteriorate basically. And then the vehicle itself had that dusty, faded appearance. Certainly, definitely uh, shows a lot of wear on here. Um, streaking effects just basically done with oils again 
maybe a few more touches to do in terms of oil i'll highlight that on the next video next video is going to be on tracks we'll just do a separate video entirely on master club tracks and uh thanks a lot guys any questions anything you want to ask always here to answer you so until next time it's the bear and i'm out of here